In this question, an electromagnet is being modeled by an RL circuit. We know this is an RL circuit because it contains a resistor and an inductor symbolized by R and L. And there are a couple of equations that we must obey with RL circuits. The first that we will be using is this equation right here. We'll actually consider this for parts A and C of this question. This is giving us the current as a function of time. It's a bit of a complex equation, but we can represent this equation down below with this graph right here. It turns out that once the switch is closed at time zero, the current is going to increase towards its maximum value of EMF divided by resistance. We can see that graphically here that at time zero, when the switch is closed, the current actually is zero. But if we wait for a certain period of time, the current rises and eventually approaches a maximum value on the graph given by, again, EMF divided by resistance. So for part A, when they ask for the maximum current, what we can do is simply take the EMF supplied by the battery and divide that by the resistance. Now in this question, the EMF supplied by the battery is 24 volts, and the resistance value of the resistor is 4.5 ohms. So if we divide these two values, then we're going to get the correct answer for the maximum current. And so this turns out to be approximately 5.33 amps will be the value of the maximum current. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. In part B, we are asked for the time constant. Now the time constant is symbolized by this Greek letter tau, and it's very easy to calculate. It's simply the value of L, the so-called inductance, divided by the resistance value. Now we were given an inductance of 12 henries and a resistance again of 4.5 ohms. So we'll easily be able to find the time constant in part B. So again, the time constant is L divided by R, we'll take the L value of 12 henries and divide it by the resistance. So when you divide these two quantities, you will get 2.67 approximately. And the time constant unit turns out to be in seconds. It is a unit of time. So that's the correct answer to part B of the question. Part C is perhaps the trickiest. It says to determine the time it takes the current to reach 95% of its maximum value. So for that, we're going to have to use this equation. So why don't we copy and paste this down below for part C. And again, the question says 95% of its maximum value. So there's a neat way of writing that actually. We know that the maximum value was the EMF divided by the resistance. This question wants 95% of that. So you would take 95% in decimal form, so 0.95, and multiply that by the maximum value of the current. So that's the current on the left-hand side of the equation. It's 95% of the maximum. And on the other side, we can just sort of recopy the values we have here. Okay, now, we'll notice that the quantity EMF divided by resistance appears on both sides of the equation. So we can actually divide both sides by that quantity. And when we do that, it will conveniently cancel on both the left and the right hand side. So we can rewrite this equation in much simpler terms. It will be 0.95 equals. Now, because of the cancellation on the right hand side, we actually no longer need the parentheses around this quantity here. So we're gonna drop the parentheses and our goal is to find time. And we recall that the time constant tau was calculated in part B, that was 2.67. So we're actually going to plug that in and then we're gonna work on solving for lowercase t, which is the time that the question is asking for. So perhaps the next best thing for us to do is to subtract one from both sides of this equation. By doing that, the one here and the minus one there will cancel out. The left-hand side, we have 0.95 minus one, which of course is negative 0.05. So this will equal negative E raised to the negative T over 2.67. 
Now, the negative sign here and the negative sign on the other side effectively cancel out. Technically, we have to divide both sides of the equation by negative 1, but what that does is cancel out the negative sign. So 0 0.05 is equal to negative e, excuse me, 0 0.05 is equal to positive e, these negatives have canceled, raised to the power of negative t over 2.67. Now, the next thing to do is to somehow cancel out this e. And basically to do that without going to the details of logarithms, you take the natural log on both sides. So what that does is it actually allows you to bring this quantity down in front of ln of e. So you have negative t over 2.67 multiplied by ln of e. That's nice though because the ln of e is equal to 1. So we can actually just retain negative t over 2.67 on the right-hand side because the times 1 doesn't change that quantity. The other side is ln of 0 0.05. And I guess for now, we'll just leave it as ln of 0 0.05. We're almost there. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by 2.67. So the 2.67s will cancel out on the right-hand side. And then we have negative t hanging out here. We don't want negative t, we want t. So we're gonna divide both sides of the equation by negative one one more time, like that. And so the negatives cancel there. So now you just pick up your calculator and you type this expression in. Let's give it a shot. 2.67 times the natural log of 0.05, and then divide that by negative one, and you end up with about 7.5. 99 seconds as the correct answer to part C. This is how much time it's going to take for the current to reach 95% of its maximum value.